Hi, everybody. Hi. Congratulations. You want to say congratulations? Congratulations. You're talking to the class of 2019. Seniors, welcome to Thailand. What's up, class of 2019? Man, I miss you guys so much. Hello, everybody. To the graduating class of 2019, congratulations, you guys. I just wanted to let you all know how special you are to me and how privileged I feel to have spent the last three years in the academy with you guys. Okay, Aiden, you are super fun, super smart, really sweet. I have a feeling you're gonna be famous, so don't forget me when you are. Amanda, you are super bubbly, super fun to be around. Don't let college get you, because for some reason everyone in college becomes boring because we think we need to be cool. But don't let that anyone get to your personality. You have the greatest, most positive, bubbly personality ever. Heidi, you're super beautiful, super sweet, super smart. You're so caring, but do not forget to care about yourself. You are so valuable, don't forget that. Jesse, you're so fun and so talented and sweet also. Basically, focus on the positive. You need to remember that people love you. You're a great person. And no matter what, even if you don't feel like it, just you know, focus on God and know that he loves you no matter what. Leo, you're one of the first people I met at Weimar. You're so outgoing, so fun, you're crazy. Don't lose that. Don't let, high, don't let college ruin that either. Don't forget that God loves you no matter what and people do care about you. Rachel, I wish I could have gotten to know you better, but uh, anyways, you're super sweet and super smart and you're beautiful. And don't forget that you are an amazing, valuable person and that people love you, that God loves you no matter what. Samuel, you're so funny and man, you're just, you're a great person. You're super sweet, you're always looking out for other people. Don't forget to look out for yourself. Also, don't lose your focus on God. I've always about, admired how focused you are on that. Just stay positive. And Soren, man, you're so smart. It's so funny. Also, don't lose that in college. Don't get boring like everyone else. And you're probably gonna be famous one day too, so don't forget me. But yeah, don't forget to make sure God's the center of all of you guys' lives. And Charlo, you're one of the closest friends I've ever had in my life, and I really appreciate the, all the influence that you've had in my life. I really miss you, and I really hope, I mean, you're gonna do great in college. Many of the memories that I have from Academy Days are with you guys, like surviving ground shenanigans with Rachel, um, having deep conversations with Amanda, the joys of working with Soren and laughing at all his jokes during the meetings, creating crazy, ridiculous choir intros with Mackenzie, and eating sketchy popsicles in Bolivia with Charlo and Aiden. Even though you're almost done with high school, don't forget the memories that you made, like laughing so hard together and feeling like you can't breathe or feeling stressed about decorating for Agape Feast and the amazing experiences you had on the mission trip. Each of these experiences, when you look back on them, it creates a map and shows you how God led in your life, whether it was the good experiences and the bad experiences. Ha, huh, the class of 2019. Do you remember how sometimes when we'd be working on homework or something like that in class, Charlotte would just start burst out singing and everyone would start singing? When things are dark, don't forget to sing. Thank you guys for putting up with all my experiments like A homework and B homework, and reading you stories at the beginning of class, and working out in the garden, and having iced tea. And I'm sorry for all the times that I treated you like you weren't human, like those times on that one choir tour where I kept telling everybody not to squeak the steps. You guys bring so much memories because you were the last freshman class that I had a pleasure of working with. Just reflecting the concert at the Campus Hills, I honestly thought it was so beautiful. I cried quite a bit. Your, your love for Jesus was reflected through every song. I remember our first freshman sophomore Vespers, we had a ramen bar for supper. And then we played games and were laughing so hard and having such a good time. We really appreciate the friendship that you guys gave us over the years. And we will never forget the memories that we made together. Thank you for the um, pop quiz that you sprang on us in Mr. Stewart's government class um, that turned into our junior senior invitations. And um, thank you for an unforgettable junior senior day and for all the work that you guys put into that. 
Um, you guys have been a wonderful class to be with. We have so many wonderful memories from Weimar. Uh, family groups, mission trips, choir tours, singing morning worship songs together. Uh, so many cherished memories. And it seems like yesterday I saw many of you come in as eighth graders. It's great to see how the Lord has been working in your life and growing you each day. My biggest piece of advice is to remember. As time goes on, you can't remember everything that happens during your time at Weimar and everything that God was able to do through you at Weimar. So pick one memory or one moment or even a few moments that you had at Weimar that shapes you into who you are now or showed you who you want to become or just a, a moment in time when you were at Weimar where you felt God tangibly with you and hold on to it. So when life does become extremely confusing, you'll have it. Now there will probably be some memories that weren't so pleasant, but look at them as times or events that God used to make you a stronger and a better person. He stood by you through the entire way, and he is going to stand by you through this next phase in your life. I'm guessing that things maybe have turned out a little bit differently than you expected when you think back to August. The year has been full of challenges, and honestly, that's that's normal. I was like, life is filled with challenges. We can expect that because we live in a world that's controlled by the enemy, we're going to face challenges. And yet we have a choice every time that we're confronted with those challenges. Do I focus on the challenge or do I focus on Christ? Um, do I run to him to talk and to listen or to someone who's going to direct me to him? Or do I run to those who are gonna sympathize with me in such a way that the challenge wins and ends up becoming bigger in my mind than, than Christ? I, I just would encourage you to seek refuge in, in Christ in the midst of all of your challenges. I would encourage you to seek refuge with people who will lead you to him, um, that will help you to grow in the midst of the trials that you experience. Stick together, keep in touch with each other, but most importantly, keep in touch with God because you've been through a lot of change in the last four years and you're gonna continue to go through a lot of change as this world gets darker and darker. As you are light in this world, you're gonna shine brighter and brighter. Not because you are anything good, but because God is gonna shine through you, as long as you let him. What you need as you go through life is not going to be information, but people. There are going to be tough things that come your way, and so when those things happen, you need people that you can fall back on. So I would encourage you to stay connected to each other, um, connect yourself to people who will hold you accountable and who will be there for you. I appreciate the time that you have with your classmates because the year's coming to an end and you may not see these people again. So appreciate them while you have them. Most of all, stay connected to Jesus because he'll never fail you. My biggest advice for you is if you want to be truly successful, place Christ very first in your life. He will teach you how to live a balanced life. He will help you get the grades that you need. He will be your eternal stress reliever and he will bring you true happiness. Your perfect lives and futures are held tightly in his hands and he will reveal them to you little by little. You just need to trust in him. The Lord needs you in his work. Uh, our church is, needs young people and you've had a very special experience there. I know um, and God has prepared you and equipped you for work for him. And we're so excited for what you're going to do. You've already been working for him and doing great things. He wants to take that even to another levels. <clears throat> and we're excited about what he's gonna do in your life. When you hit college, I always ask that question, what do you believe in? Why are you a seven day Adventist? Because it's gonna be different when you go to college. You're not gonna have that through the academy atmosphere. Spend time with God if you really want to know Him. If you really want to stay with God, just spend time in His Word. Seek Him, either through music, sermons, most importantly, reading the Bible. Your time at Weimar Academy is up, and now the world is going to be yours, and now you have a choice. Whether you go to college, whether you start working, whether you go to the mission field, or a combination of all the three, it doesn't matter what you do. All that matters is that you try to put a smile on the face of God each and every day. And now moving forward, things aren't going to be sunshine and rainbows. 
things might be difficult at times and this past December I did the most difficult thing I've had to do and that's run a marathon. I'd never been in that much pain for something I thought I wanted to do before but in the end it was worth it. And so now it's time to start thinking about these long-term goals and so long term you have to see where you want to be and you have to do these small things to get there and it's going to be painful at times but the key is to not give up. If you take every loss and turn it into a lesson, then L's actually make W's. If you're going to become good at something, you gotta be okay with starting out bad at it. That's what growth is about. And just because you're holding God's hand in life doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to never allow you to make mistakes. He's interested in having a relationship of growth and of learning with you. And he's interested in being your coach and your guide along the way and helping you when you fall down. Failure is an event, not a person. If you mess up, it's okay. Don't let what you have done reflect to yourself and make it become who you are. God's always there to pick you up when you fall down and you're going to learn from that failure and hopefully not make it again. I'm talking to those who have not figured it out because you have interest in so many areas, not because you are unintelligent, but you are good at many things. So you may think there's something wrong with me. I want you to know that God has given you that intellect, that interest, that as you focus on loving God and serving Him and His people, God will use this talent. You could be coming up with innovative solutions for old problems. So don't be discouraged if you end up changing majors like three times or quit school for a while. I see that God is still able to use people who don't always fit in this box of linear thinkers. Don't worry if you have no idea what you're wanting to do next year or you're wanting to do with your life. Um, everybody changes their mind in college and if they don't, um, trust me, you'll question your decision on every major test anyways. I know that you've probably been experiencing senioritis for the better part of like six months by now. That's just pretty normal to want out. but. I'm gonna encourage you not to go through life thinking, oh, it's gonna be so much better when, you know, fill in the blank. Um, because something's always going to be lacking um, if that's our mindset. Even if you feel like you're going insane or senioritis is in full throttle or you're just stressing about finals, enjoy it. <laughs> God will lead you to some pretty amazing places over the next few years, but again, none of them will be Weimar. And um, there's really something special there that you won't, you won't find it anywhere else. So enjoy it. Have the mindset, Christ is sufficient. He's sufficient right now in the midst of all the trials, of all the challenges. He's orchestrating your story. He's giving you a testimony um, of his faithfulness in spite of the trials. And then that testimony can be used to, to draw others to him. What I wanted to share with you uh, from a father's heart is uh, the most important thing that I'm, I'm sure your parents are desiring is not just that you're graduating from high school, but that you have an eternal relationship with Jesus and that you uh, will be in the kingdom with him. There's nothing more important. Philippians 1, 6 says, He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And we are looking forward to Christ completing that work in each one of us so that we can complete the work he has for us. Now go forward as his ambassadors. Take the lessons you learned, the friendships you made, and go change the world one soul at a time. Thank you for persevering. Thank you for letting me be part of your life. Thank you for all the texts and late night calls when you needed help with homework. All those things are really special to me. All of you are very special to me and I love you all very much. And I love all of you. Bye. We love you. We're praying for you and we can't wait to see you graduate soon and uh, God bless. I hope maybe I'll be able to see you guys soon, but if not, we'll meet up in heaven.
and yes, Soren, and we can sing one Christmas song. May God bless you as you as you go on to the next phase of your life. God bless you, and He loves you very much. Amen. Goodbye. So anyway. I, I love you, I'm praying for you, I miss you, I hope that you have a beautiful graduation in a couple of weeks, and I just um, want you to know that my heart will be there with you.